Welcome back, this is Part-Time Guardian. In my previous video, I discussed what you could do in the next few weeks, and this was a couple weeks ago, as you prepare for Beyond Light. Since then, there have been small changes to the powering system for Beyond Light per the most recent TWAB. In this video, we'll discuss, once the season starts, how to officially grind up XP and power, keeping those changes in mind. Again, if you find value out of this video, a like would be appreciated, and feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more quality Destiny 2 content. First off, let's let's talk about some details for the next season. The power cap for Beyond Light has come out. It's 1200 for the soft cap, 1250 for the hard cap, and 1260 for the pinnacle cap. And of course, the raid is probably going to be somewhere at the end encounter is about 1250, so keep that in mind. Also, all of your older guild that's below 1050 will be brought up to 1050. And then anything that you brought up to 1060 will stay at 1060. So obviously, that'll give you a little bit of a, of a jump on the game when you're trying to get to 1200. For those who are not familiar with the soft cap or some of these terms, the soft cap is what you get from just playing the game. And at a certain point, you max out, and that's your maximum power level outside of what's in the seasonal rank. If you went higher than that, you have to do powerful and pinnacle rewards. So again, to relate that to the season, once you get up to 1200, if you want to get to 1250, you've got to do things called powerful rewards. Once you get to 1250, if you want to get above that, you have to do things called pinnacle rewards. And they become increasingly difficult and less available so it takes a little bit longer to do for the upcoming dlc this is what i'm going to recommend also keep in mind i don't know the impact of the dlc to activities on the moon including the raid and eros rewards so i will not be discussing those and that also includes pit but i do expect them to drop from the levels they are at before of course as explained in my previous video make sure to hoard bounties as much as you can but only keep seven crucible gambit and strike bounties and banshee so you don't mess up powerful rewards in the next season because if you get to eight that's going to be created issue where you'll lose some powerful drops in your first week also make sure to go to each vendor and clear out any pending powerful rewards just in case they would carry over the next season and cause you issues i would first start with your least placed character and i'm going to call that character three in the rest of this video i would log in and try to get him for fire team this allows you to benefit from the fire team xp increases that you get as you level up on your seasonal pass you will get buffs in addition to your first few levels, which is via the well-rested buff. Also make sure to have a shell on that has the 10% increase in XP. The reason for doing this is you advance the seasonal rank, because I know some people are like, well, that doesn't help you with your power. That's true, but as you advance your seasonal rank, you're gonna unlock some things that you can drop that can help you. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But you'll also gain XP bonuses, which again will help you to get your XP faster and get on your seasonal rank a little bit quicker. And again, that seasonal rank is going to unlock other things that will become in handy later. Then go to your second most played character and do basically the same thing. And when you do that, you do that to your second character and then you do that to your third character. Once you're complete with that, you're probably gonna be somewhere around level 15 on the, the track. That's what I've typically in most seasons. Now, this season, some of the uh, amount of XP may change a little bit, but that's what I've had in most seasons. Once you're complete with that, you're good with XP for now. Don't worry about that. You'll get XP as you grind out, and that doesn't take a long time. Now, the one thing to keep in mind, don't play any activities before you do that. Don't go into campaign. Don't do anything if possible. They may force you into initial mission. We'll, we'll see. But again, just do that initially. Then you want to start your third player again and play the campaign completely. As you do this, pick up any blues, but do not worry about upgrading your existing gear. Just use your worst gear again. Now, you don't have to have that gear on you to achieve that higher power level and to, to max out your average. You just have it, have it in your inventory. But a lot of times, because I'm just trying to keep track of it, I'll keep it in my inventory so I keep a good idea of what my average power level is. Once you're done with this, transfer your highest weapons over to your second character and do this again. And then do it on the first. The reason for this is allows you to unlock any activities across all characters because you're like, why did I play the campaign three times? Again, if you're not gonna play three characters, that's fine. If you only have one character, that's fine. But if you wanna grind up as much as you can, you're gonna wanna have access to all the things out of the campaign. And to do that, because I, I did this at Shadowkeep, I didn't get to my third character, and then I noticed that I, there were certain things I couldn't do on my third character, because again, I just didn't go through the campaign. So I would go ahead and do that. Again, it's up to you on how quickly you wanna grind up, but that would be my recommendation. Hopefully at this point you're at 1200 and it's going to you know, vary based on how you do things. If you're not, take that first character because you went from your third to your second to your first character and just go grind some really easy content because all you're looking for blues at this point. 
do public events, patrols, or hoard activity like the blind well. Things that do a lot of drops or quick rewards. Do things like that. Don't play any core game content, so don't play any Crucible or Gambit or anything like that because you don't want to mess up some of your power rewards that you can use later. Once you're done that and your first character is all the way up to 1200, now you're going to try to go after the hard cap. To do this, go back to your third character, transfer all your, your highest weapons again, and do the, do the following things. First off, grab your eighth bounty for both Shaq, Zavala, Banshee, and Drifter. Again, remember, you already turned in seven, so if you turn that eighth, that alone, when you turn that in, those are all of those are going to be powerful rewards. Go into Crucible and play for the rotating matches. Again, this isn't your core things to say things to say every week, like survival and things like that. These are things that rotate every week, and some of those can be some interesting modes. And again, I'm not sure how, what that'll look like because I know some of the Crucible modes are going away. But again, play those. That'll give you a powerful drop. And as you go up in Valor, each of those Valor ranks, which are easy to get at the very beginning, those give you powerful drops as well. So that comes in really handy. Play enough Gambit to finish your bounty, but don't play three games. If you play three games, you'll you'll get a pinnacle. You don't want to do that yet. Play three Nightmare Hunts. Again, you can do this on the easiest uh, level. Those things are really quick to go through. And then do three Ordeal Nightfalls. Again, the level doesn't matter. Do the easiest thing, just grind through them. Um, you know, hopefully Lake of Shadows is what's there the first week, but you never know, right? Now, hopefully when you're doing that, you can also get that final strike um, bounty done. If not, you can play another strike. Just if you're going to, you could even potentially play things on the elemental uh, for that week. Just don't do three of them because then that's where you get your pinnacle. But go ahead and do that so you get that additional bounty cleared. So again, as you're doing these things, make sure to go back to the tower where you have to do to redeem things as, as frequently as possible because with every powerful drop. So let's say you go and you pick up one from Zavala and it, get, and it boosts your overall rank by like two points or something. What you're going to do in addition then is then the next powerful drop you get will be even higher. So you're going to want to try, I know it's a little tedious, but you're going to want to try to go back to the tower to do those and do those in order. You know, make sure you, you have those things in your inventory and keep them. If they go to your postmaster, get them back. Okay, so you have them available. The same thing will go with Prime Ingrams. As you're playing the game and doing different things, you'll get so many Prime Ingrams a week. And those will additionally be powerful drops, but those are kind of random. But you'll get those as you're doing some of these activities. At this point, you'll probably also have some sort of powerful reward from the campaign. Uh, usually from the campaign, there's something like that. There'll also be something from the seasonal event, more than likely. But that seasonal event doesn't start for another week, so the first week you can't do that. After that, you'll probably be able to do whatever that looks like. Once you're do done with that on your third character, basically do the same thing we did when you were grinding up this soft cap. Take your weapons, take them over your second character, do all the stuff I talked about. Again, you don't have to do all of this, but again, if you want to grind up quickly, this is the key to doing it. And then do it on the third character. Once you're done with that, you've basically played through everything that's powerful outside of getting additional Prime Ingrams. At this point, if you're not at 1250, you can continue to play core activities because Bungie did announce one change, which that all core activities, let's say you continue to play strikes, you do have a chance of getting additional powerful rewards. They won't be on a schedule. Well, I don't know. There's something in the code probably, but they won't be like prescriptive where you say, hey, do two of these and you get one, right? We don't know what that looks like. But if you want to, you can continue to do that. You can also grind into survival. Again, if you do grind into survival, you're going to start to get some of your pinnacles. So that's up to you whether you want to do it. But if you do grind into survival, not only will you get um, valor rank updates, but you also get glory rank updates. Again, both of those are powerful. Now, at this point, you need to decide how much you want to grind. So if you want to, you can start dipping into your pinnacles. Keep in mind that if you do that, they're going to drop below the hard cap. Now, again, if you don't think you're going to get through it in the week, and I don't know what it's going to look like for the DLC, it might be okay to do that. Now, the second week, you're probably going to make sure you save these. But let's talk about what pinnacle activity rewards look like. So again, these are over 1250, and they'll give you they'll give you very small, slow incremental increases. But for these, you play three strikes on the daily burn, you play three gambit matches, you play 100 K nightfall. Or you play four core crucible matches, which you may have already done already. There may be additional items for the campaign and for the seasonal event, but we just don't know what that looks like right now. There's also the possibility that there could be a dungeon this year. There was last season. I do think that's a model that uh, Destiny's trying to stay with. So if there is something like that, there could be something there also. The other thing to keep in mind is as you do this and you grind up your XP, you're going to get your rank up on your seasonal rank. And again, this is the reason I pointed this out. You're going to get armor drops as part of that. Those armor drops happen at your current average max power level. Why is that good? Let's say you have a bunch of things and your power level's at some level. 
but yeah, maybe you have your leg armor is like three below, so it's, it's kind of holding you back. It's hard to get that random drop. What you could do is you can then go into your uh, seasonal rank and just grab that uh, leg armor if you've already gotten it out, and that'll instantly boost everything else up. So it's very important. I, I would use that as sort of a last resort, but if you ha are having problems with a specific piece, go ahead and do that. And then obviously once you're done with all of that, you've done all your pinnacles, you've done it ranked up, you're gonna be maxed up for the season. Obviously with the seasonal rank, you'll have some power level above that, which in some activities is useful and some isn't, but that's basically the, the core of everything. It should be pretty easy to get uh, ready for the raid. Um, I know contest mode is going to boost, uh, reduce everything down to 1230. Once you get past that, um, I think the end, uh, end encounter is going to be probably around 1250. So again, I think it's very doable to do in a short period of time. So that's the video, guys. Again, I'm really looking forward to the new season. Beyond Light looks really exciting. If you do find value out of this video, and I hope you do, Feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel. Get into my community. Talk about what you'd like to see next because I like to put out videos for part-time guardians like all of us who basically have limited time to play but want to maximize that gameplay. That's the whole reason for this channel. And again, I'll see you guardians in the tower.